Hello and welcome to Startup Street. I'm Arundhati Ramnin and with me from the Bangalore studio is Ritu Singh. These are the top headlines from the startup space. Twitter sacks 200 more employees on Saturday night, which impacted product managers, data scientists and engineers who worked on machine learning and site reliability, say reports. Twitter had earlier fired 50 employees in the eighth such round of job cuts since Musk took over. The firm eliminated jobs across engineering teams, including those supporting advertising, technology, the main Twitter app and technical infrastructure. Sources tell CNBC TV 18 that the Bharti Group had shown interest in buying Paytm's stake, but talks collapsed last month. Sources say that Paytm did not want to give up management control, also did not see a strategic alliance in payments business. Paytm shares rallied 3% in early trade. Nail care startup O2 Nails bags $150,000 in seed funding round from real-time angel fund and AIC Bimtech. The brand plans to open 100 plus stores in FY23 to 24. It is aiming to grow its retail footprint and customer base by 500% and 10x respectively. Even as tech giant Google continues to cut down staff, a sacked Indian employee stated that layoffs are not based on performance. In a LinkedIn post, Google India employee Animesh Swain stated, pink slips were also served to employees with highest ratings. The list also names those who were recently awarded promotions. Google India recently terminated more than 400 employees. EU Industry Chief Thierry Breton defended a con consultation on whether big tech should foot the bill for billions of euros of investment in Europe's telecoms infrastructure, saying it was not about putting big telecoms interests above tech companies. The official said he did not see the issue as binary choice between those who provide networks today and those who feed them with the traffic. Well, those were the headlines that we are tracking for you today on Startup Street. But let's start with the CNBC TV 18 exclusive, where telecom major Bharti Airtel was in talks with Paytm to buy stake in the company, but the deal collapsed last month. Now, sources have told us that Paytm declined to give up management control to Bharti Airtel, which could be one of the reasons why the deal did not go through. Nisha Pudar joins us with more details on this. Nisha, tell us what you're picking up about why the deal did not go through. That's right. Sources with direct knowledge uh, who know the, about the developments in both the companies, Bharti Group as well as Paytm, have shared with us that uh, there was indeed an exploratory deal talk between Bharti Group as well as Paytm in the month of January. But the deal talks did not continue and it collapsed. And at the current moment, there is no transaction on the table or no deal talks between these two parties is what we gather from sources with direct knowledge. Now, that is a clarity on the present status of any such transaction. Regarding uh, also addressing the reports uh, which have been uh, speculating about a transaction. But on the other hand, what really transpired is that Bharti Group, as we understand from direct sources, had been interested in buying a stake in the parent company Paytm, even though they have a common business of payments bank which is uh, under Bharti Airtel as well as under Paytm. So even though they have commonality when it comes to business, it was a parent company, Paytm, in which Bharti Group uh, was interested in probably exploring a stake buy, but the deal talks collapsed, as we gather from sources, because Paytm management was not keen on giving up the management control. Also, we gathered that Paytm does not think that there is a strategic alliance even in payments bank business between Bharti Group as well as Paytm because their models of uh, the, doing this business are completely different. So those are the important aspects because of which the deal talks did not fructify and had collapsed in the last month and at the moment we gather there are no deal talks on between Bharti Group as well as Paytm. Time will only tell if at all there is a revival in this direction but also remember Remember that Ant Group as well as SoftBank put together own about 38% stake in the company and uh, Ant Group, the single largest shareholder, will have to sh uh, shave off some bit of their stake because of the SEBI norms which does not allow it to have a stake of 25%. So they'll have to bring it down and they'll have to sem sell some part of the stake. But experts do also point out with such a large stake between two influential uh, investors, well, they will also play a pivotal role in any deal transaction in future as well for Paytm. So it's a no deal right now between Paytm and Bharti. Well, thank you so much for all those details, Nisha. 
Moving on, Chronicle, a startup building a modern format of presentation, has bagged $7.5 million. The seed round was led by Axel. Angels from Meta, Apple, Google, Slack, Stripe and Adobe also invested in this round. Now, the startup will use the fresh funds to build the product faster, making a few more hires and also expanding its user base through a product-led growth approach. Joining me now to discuss this further is Mayuresh Patole, the co-founder and CEO of Chronicle. Mayuresh, thank you so much for joining us on Startup Street. Your company essentially, like I said, helps build a modern format of presentation. So talk to me about how it's different, um, how different your offerings are from, let's say, like a PowerPoint. How are you making the processes more efficient and different? Also, what led you to think of this idea? Yeah, Chronicle is quite different from PowerPoint in that the output of Chronicle is not slides at all. It is a completely different format that is very engaging and interactive. Uh, Chronicle is also extremely convenient to create instead of drawing shapes and text and formatting those or spending hours to pixel push. Uh, you can create a really impactful and stunning presentation on Chronicle in minutes instead of hours. So it's 50x faster and easier. Um, we also ensure that you cannot create a bad presentation on Chronicle. Uh, we believe that the problem truly is that uh, not only are great presentations extremely hard to create, but bad ones are very easy. So we want to prevent that and want to bring good information design to people's fingertips. Uh, so that's how Chronicle is uh, different. Uh, this really started with my own decade-long affair with presentations. Uh -huh. I'd always been known for my presentations, and they were slightly different from traditional slides. Um, pursuing that and trying to answer the question that I got asked quite constantly, uh, around how I make my interactive presentations was how Chronicle started. All right, great. Yeah, that's true. Making interactive presentations are a bit hard. But you've also got backing from angels uh, like uh, angels from Apple, Google, Meta, Slack, Stripe and Adobe. Could you share names? Also talk to us about the conversations with these tech leaders. Yeah, I think there was tremendous interest in, uh, in sort of being part of the journey. Uh, these are some of our favorite products, and we went out looking for operators who've played pivotal roles in, in some of these companies, specifically people who've shaped uh, social, media plat uh, social media formats. That's where we drew a lot of inspiration from. Uh, we believe that a lot of these formats are the way that people consume information today, and so we wanted to get people on board who've, uh, who've actively designed and built these formats. I'm not at liberty to share exact names of, of the angels right now. Right. Uh, that list is also growing and evolving as we keep getting more and more interest. Uh, but yeah, that, that was sort of the thinking behind involving people from these companies. All right. And you've raised $7.5 million. So uh, what are you going to spend the money on? What's on top of the agenda at this point? Um, I think we've lost our connection there. We're going to try and see if we can get him back on uh, air. But at this point, uh, Chronicle is a company that makes presentations. It has raised seven and a half million dollars, and uh, we're going. And they've got backing from many angels like Stripe, Adobe, Meta, Google, and a whole host of these companies. So we're just trying to see if we can connect Mayuresh back on air. Uh, Mayuresh, can you hear me? Okay, so we're going to just, on that note, take a break and we'll be back and see if we can continue this conversation with Mayuresh. Back is still with us on Startup Street. Uh, before the break, we were talking to uh, the founder of Chronicle, which is a startup building a modern format of presentation and has backed $7.5 million. Mayuresh, it's good to have you back. Um, I was asking you, you've raised $7.5 million. So tell me what's on the agenda. What are you going to use these funds for? The focus is quite clear right now. It is to build a really world-class product. And to do that, we need top-tier, amazing founding members in the team. Uh, all, all of the funds uh, would currently be deployed at putting this team together uh, and building the product. That's the singular focus. Right. We will also take this product to our early customers. Uh, and, and those are the only two things we will spend, spend this money on right now. All right. And uh, since you said to your early customers, you're currently in your beta phase and you're working about 200 pilot with about 200 pilot users at this point. So what is available to your users in this phase? And when will, you see, when will we see you expand and open it up to everyone? What's the feedback that you're currently getting? Yeah, we've handpicked these 200 users um, in order to give us like really meaningful feedback. As one might imagine, there is a lot of product features to build. Uh, but we really need to focus on something that drives value for, this uh, for these users. 
so we uh, we spend time working with this small set of users to understand what are some of the features that we should double down on and focus on. At the same time, because it's not slides, it's a different format. We yeah. really need to experiment rapidly and, and understand what's working for them and what's um, quite far out. Uh, so that iteration is what we are focused on with this small set of users. Over the course of this year, we will constantly release new sets of features, new right. blocks, new templates, and a lot more content that will help our users. And once that is all stable in the product, we, we plan on going uh, towards a public beta and opening it out. Uh, so it will take a little bit more time, um, but that's that's sort of how we are spending uh, spending the time with these early small set of users. All right, so in a year, it's, it's going to take you a year probably to do this, but uh, since you're in your beta phase, you're obviously pre-revenue at this point. So what's the monetization plan and how soon will we see this monetization happen? Yeah, after we go to our users, the next hurdle is growth and then post that it's monetization. As we open to public beta, we will start with a traditional sort of uh, subscription model. Um, we know that Chronicle's revenue model is uh, that of a, of a traditional uh, freemium um, sort of SaaS product. So we will have a free offering for uh, for entry level users. So individual users would be able to use most of the product for free. We'll have a team tier plan uh, that small and medium sized teams can use uh, with some access to additional features. Uh, and a large part of the revenue will come from enterprise users, larger teams where we can have custom offering along with some services. Uh, we also think that the content and community will drive a large part of our revenue in the future as well. Um, monetization is surely an important part uh, and one that I'm personally quite excited about, given okay. my background. Uh, but it's the next set uh, of, of challenges that we'll think about. Currently, the focus is to get to product market fit. All right. And uh, which will be your key focus markets? How big of a market will India be for you? Uh, Chronicle is a global product. Presentations right. are ubiquitous, and uh, every every market that does presentations and storytelling, uh, which is pretty much everywhere in the world, is is a focus for us. Uh, we know that US would be uh, the starting market where a lot of our initial revenue would come from. Uh, India would surely be a market that we would also target. Uh, a lot of our users, especially the early users, are from India because uh, both both the founders have backgrounds in India. Right. Uh, people we People who trust us are from India. Uh, a good part of our investment is also from India. So India is an important market for us, uh, but it is a global product and we, we intend to build it globally as well as launch it globally. Right. So India is an important market, but it is a global product. All right, Mayuresh, we're completely out of time, but many thanks for joining us on the show and we wish you all the best going forward in this journey. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Thanks a lot. Well, shared electric mobility player Yulu, along with Bajaj Auto, today launched its third generation two wheeler electric vehicles. Uh, two of them, Miracle GR and Dex GR. Now, these are going to be rolled out by Cheetah Technology, which is a 100% owned subsidiary of Bajaj Auto. Now, remember, Yulu has doubled down on its fleet in the last three months, and now it is targeting more than a 10x growth in its revenues by the end of this calendar year. Now, I caught up with Amit Gupta, who's the co-founder and CEO of Yulu, and S. Ravi Kumar, who's the Chief Business Development Officer at Bajaj Auto earlier today, to talk to them about this latest launch and their plans ahead. Take a look. very advanced cell chemistry right now. Mm -hmm. So these are lithium ion uh, built on LFP chemistry. Mm -hmm. And one charge will give you 60 kilometer range uh, without any problem. This is actually the actual road. Those are not, uh, you know, some fancy numbers. Uh, uh, Ravi, since, you know, Bajaj has partnered up for manufacturing these, uh, you know, through Chetak, uh, I just wanted to understand what is the capacity, uh, what is the sort of pipeline, uh, what should mm -hmm. we expect this year? He, he mentioned about something like about 7,000, 10,000 units per month. Whatever okay. he wants, we'll be able to give. Uh, Amit, since Ravi said, as many vehicles as you want per month, let me ask you, your target is to get 100,000 vehicles on the road uh, by the end of the year. Are you on track to do that? And how many do you have currently? Yeah, so we have 15,000 already. Hmm. By end of March, there hmm. will be 25,000. And then we progressively add seven to 8,000 uh, per month. So that has been the plan. And by end of this year, uh, we should have a fleet of 100,000 shared vehicles 
depending on you look at from. And, and what would that mean in terms of your unit economics, your revenues, your financials, and your path to profitability? How, how soon do you think you can meet some of those metrics? Certainly, certainly. So with these vehicles, I mentioned even our second generation bike, hmm. the operational matrices are actually very, 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 very powerful. Our need for maintaining repair actually has gone down significantly. Hmm. This is actually made for India. Uh, we believe that unit economics only will go up. Hmm. So as per our business plan, we are expecting reaching EBITDA basis profitability sometime this year, okay. and we are on track for that. You said the canvas is going to be pretty much global, yes. not just India. What's the plan on that front? So we are truly, truly amazed to see the opportunity. So if you look at the world, you know, there were a lot of companies who came up, they were doing the kick scooter. So while kick scooter was a fun way to move around, but that's not the safest way. Okay. There are a lot of breakages, a lot of people who are actually meeting with an accident. What we believe that this form factor actually puts you in the control. The safety aspect is very, very high. And we think that with world class product quality, we can take this market to, to many markets. So actually, I, I, I'll, I'll tell you your answer. Bajaj. Yeah. is basically right now exporting their product to 70 plus countries. Mm. I think they are the natural set of partners to go after. In fact, we already have been in discussion with some of their partners who are very keen to take this vehicle, this entire stack yeah. to their countries. So Southeast Asia, Latin America, so without getting into integrity, but wherever there's a two-wheeler preference, we think there's a value proposition for us to offer. And right. you should see that, you know, maybe this, this year itself, we should go live in one of the countries just to learn what does it mean. Mm -hmm. Our software is, is actually ready, but we still need to understand because every country has a unique mobility requirement and we don't, don't just want to force fit things. Yeah. We will go, we'll understand and we'll launch. Right. So, but from an ambition perspective, just my, like my in Mobi days, uh, we created a company in India for the world. Yeah. This company is also created in India for the world along with very trusted partner like Bajaj mm -hmm. who share the similar ambition mm -hmm. uh, for this opportunity. All right. Uh, you know, uh, also the problem for infrastructure and now you're setting up these uh, battery swapping stations with you, My Energy. Uh, what is the current capacity? How many more stations will we see you add this year over the next few years? Yeah. So from a capacity perspective, uh, we actually have a capacity to roll almost 25,000 new bikes per per month. Yeah. So when I look at our back-end capability, we can add that much. Mm. Having said that, we are not actually hasting the process. Mm. We are just going systematically. We are building one network at a time. Mm. And uh, as I said, that to start with three cities and we light up four more cities. Yeah. Uh, we uh, now are present in 100 uh, touch points. Yeah. Towards the end of this year, it will be 500 uh, okay. as per the base plan. Okay. And if things actually happen the way we are, the number can be even larger. Mm. Uh, and hopefully we'll be catering to other, or Yuma will be catering to other partners also, along okay. with Yulu, which is a network vision of Yuma. All right, uh, and Ravi, finally, you made this $8 million investment a couple of years back in Yulu. Uh, will there be further capital infusion? I know they've recently raised quite a bit of capital for this expansion, yeah, but as far as been, Bajaj is concerned, how will been, this? There has already been further investments uh, from the first investment, which was made, I think, in November 19. Mm. So with every so small capital increase, mm. yeah, overall 15 is what um, yeah. Amit mentions. So we've been at, uh, uh, at every stage of capital raise, yes, we've been with them. Meanwhile, we kicked off our special series called the Unicorn Health Check. This with the aim to create a report card of our most valued startups, delving deep into what's working and what's not. Today, we're going to look at India's logistics startup. Aishwarya Anand is here with the Health Check. Aishwarya, over to you. The logistics industry, which employs 22 million people and serves as the backbone for multiple sectors, is expected to be one of the major drivers for India's transformation into a trillion-dollar economy. The logistics industry in India was valued at $250 billion in 2021, and the market is projected to grow to $380 billion by 2025. However, it is important to note that the, that the logistics ecosystem in India is still grappling with various challenges, including high costs, heavily intermediated returns, and others. As a low-income economy, India is ranked 44th in the Logistics Performance Index. This is as per the World Bank. The cost of logistics in India is around 14% of the GDP, which is significantly higher compared to BRICS countries, as well as the US and Germany. The government has set a target to reduce this cost to 8% of the GDP by 2030. E-commerce, retail, FMCG and pharmaceutical companies have been the biggest growth drivers for the logistics sector. 
The pandemic has also caused a significant increase in demand for express delivery services in India, which is a highly, highly fragmented market with 75% of the players in the organized space. As per Retsio, the last mile delivery segment is expected to grow into a profitable $6 billion market by 2024. Riding on this growth, the logistic tech startups clogged an overall funding of $118 billion in the last three years. So let's take a look at the financial health at some of these unicorns in this space. Delivery, which went public in 2022, was the first Indian logistics company to enter the unicorn club in 2019. As of FI21, Delivery was recognized as the fastest growing fully integrated logistics services provider in India by revenue. However, in FI23, the firm reported a net loss of Rs 196 crore as its operating revenue fell to Rs 1,824 crore. Now, nonetheless, the company stated that its overall business economics was still improving with an adjusted EBITDA margin of negative 3.7% in Q3 FY23. A competitor to delivery, Express Beast turned unicorn after a $300 million round led by Blackstone, TGP Growth and Chris Capital in 2022. The company demonstrated a strong financial performance in FY22 with revenues of more than Rs 1,900 crore, moving closer to break even. Moreover, its EBITDA margin turned positive in FY22, expanding to 2.33% from minus 1.95% in FY21. In 2022, Kirana Focus B2B e-commerce platform Elastic Run became the fifth startup to join the Billion Dollar Club and is currently valued at $1.4 billion. The SoftBank Bank startup Elastic Run has reported a widened loss of Rs 373 crore in FI22 attributed to a sharp rise in the cost of procuring goods and employee benefits expenses. However, the company is not burning much cash as it spends a rupee to earn a rupee of revenue. ShipRocket, launched in 2017 and backed by Zomato, is an aggregator of 3PL companies and operates differently from other third-party logistic businesses. It partners with courier services such as Delivery, ExpressBees, DTDC, Shadowfax and e-commerce Express rather than competing with them. In FY22, the logistics unicorn slipped into the red, reporting a cons consolidated loss of Rs 93.1 crore due to doubling of its expenses. The startup also posted a profit of Rs 12.5 crore in FY21. Revigo, founded in 2014, disrupted the trucking industry with its unique relay training trucking model where drivers switch trucks at predetermined pit stops to reduce transit time and driver fatigue. The company gained popularity and saw strong financial performance reaching a valuation of $1 billion in 2019. However, the asset-heavy nature of the business model created scaling challenges and the company faced financial difficulties in 2020. In FY21, its total revenue was Rs 634 crore and the B2B Express business constituted Rs 295 crore of that. It also posted a loss of Rs 320 crore in FY21. Meanwhile, in 2022, it sold its B2B Express business to Mahindra Logistics at a valuation which is less than 1x multiple of its revenue. Blackbuck, that directly competes with Revigo, claims to drive more than 90% of market share of all online trucking activity. The company saw its losses increase by about 18% year-on-year to Rs 285 crore in FY22. High costs pushed up the company's expenses by about 2% to Rs 1,154 crore. The company's financials indicate that it is yet to return to its pre-COVID levels. Well, that's where India's logistics industry stands currently. Now, with initiatives such as PM Gati Shakti, ONDC and the National Logistics Policy, India hopes to move up to position 25 on the Logistics Performance Index. Ashwara, thanks very much for taking us through that report card on India's logistics sector. But on that note, we're going to wrap up this edition of Startup Street. Thank you very much for watching. Stay with us. The news continues on the other side of the break.